I'm Stephen Weber. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Don't be alone with Jay, Jay Kogan. Hi there, and welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. I am Jay Kogan. That shouldn't be a surprise to you because that's my show and you tuned in to potentially hear me. Anyway, uh, this is my show where I talk to interesting and funny people and I run from the law. I don't know if you hear the siren. Uh, I talk to interesting, this is my show where I talk to interesting and funny people about issues that I'm having in my life. Um, one of the issues I'm having in my life this week and my special guest is Stephen Weber, who's a star of stage and screen and and uh, sometimes on stage and on screen at the same time, but also television and many other things. Um, the Internet. He's a star of the Internet. He's a star of every media and medium you can possibly have. Uh, the problem we're going to talk about this week is something that I'm just talking about with an old hand. He's a guy who about my age. He grew up with show busy parents and I grew up with show busy parents and I thought show business was going to be one thing. And show business turned out to be slightly something else. Not necessarily worse, but different. It's seamier. It's crustier. It's uh, my, my shows that I work on are filmed in dirty warehouses. I, I have uh, people, you know, we're, we're eating cold sandwiches and drinking terrible sodas if we can get them. Uh, and it's not a glamorous world. It's not a glamorous life. Yes, premieres are glamorous and award shows are fun and glamorous, but they are few and far between. Everything else is just hustling and sweating and running, racing out the clock and trying to get budgets uh, fixed. And it's just, there's a lot of sweat equity put into every show that you see, even the worst ones. Uh, so I'll talk about it with Weber and talk about what he thinks show business was going to be for him and maybe what our expectations should be for the future. Uh, and uh, I'm glad you're here with us. If you have any thoughts and questions, uh, I'd like you to send them into Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. That's D-B-A-W-J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com. And now on with the Stephen Weber of it all. Don't be alone with Jay, Jay Kogan. Hello and welcome to uh, Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. I am Jay Kogan, and this is a show where I talk to interesting and fabulous people about problems I'm having. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why that's why why people should be doing that, but it's okay. And today uh, I have a guest with me who is uh, an old friend. I would say friend. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're friends. Uh, friends. Acquaintances. We don't go to dinner that right. much, but I'm right. when I see you, I want to hug you. So that, yeah. that's a friend. Um, there's a lot of acquaintances I don't want to hug. Sure. Okay. So, uh, the Stephen Weber, who I'm not positive that we've ever worked together, but we've been in the same universe for yeah. many, many years. Yeah, a long time. Uh, Stephen, of course, is uh, one of America's treasures. <laughs> okay. uh, television, <laughs> television, people treasure bottle caps. Sure. Too, you know, so. uh, movies, uh, television, Broadway, uh, all form of entertainment and yes. acting. Yes. I've even seen you, uh, tear down the house at a charity function that oh. you hosted a charity function one time and oh, you're yeah. killing it yeah, yeah. yes thanks, thanks. and these are people who are angry <laughs> oh it's there. terrible They'd... those are the worst right uh so steven thank you for being here oh a pleasure a pleasure this is Happy this is very you. exciting um i when i first had the thought of doing a podcast you were one of the very first people i thought of doing it really I okay talk right. to you about it Weeks and weeks and weeks on, ago when we were on, on our the picket, picket line, line. Yeah, correct that's right. um and i don't know when this show will Air. So that's never. the idea that there was a strike, maybe a forgotten, mm -hmm. forgotten thing. But we were on. We're currently on strike yeah. with uh, with the AMPTP to try right. and get a a deal that will, at some point, secure the future of the industry for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so. and uh, and that needs to be done. Creatives need to be paid. Right. It's, nobody is forced to work in this industry. And I dare say that the vast majority of people who do, especially on the creative level, don't do so with the goal of being rich. They right. actually love to create. And if there's an industry based on that, why don't we give the creatives what they need to create, which is some sense of security. Right. I am the ability for... to eat and house themselves yeah. and 
and and maybe and create with other creatives right. and then the big people will still be rich right everybody will be happy it's a win 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 it'd be great if there was an infrastructure to allow those people to exist that right. would be great right so that's all we're asking for that's all and then we're also asking for that for the people who eventually are also the our crew members who absolutely. need to make a living absolutely and the people who you know assist us who need to make a living it's not just about shareholder price it's no, about no. a life that these companies uh, are asking us to dedicate our lives to, they have to give back a little. That's all. It makes sense. Yeah. If you have a garden, yes. do you plant the seeds and then reap all the fruits and vegetables and eat them and then not replant? You could, well, but you won't right, eat the right. next season. Yes, you're, that's, asking, that's you're my, asking gardening questions that's too. That's my tortured metaphor. <laughs> uh, an angry Jewish man. who. <laughs> my father once, my only experience with gardening, my father once, uh, I bought seeds. Sure. We had school, sell them yeah, at school, that's right. right? It was exciting. Carrot seeds, we got yeah. carrot seeds, we put them in the backyard and we planted them in the dirt and nothing happened and we were yeah. kind of upset about it. And it's, my father had heard about this mm. and he went to Gelson's and bought what, already peeled carrots. No. Yes, already peeled carrots, just stuck them in the ground um the pointy end up so so he thought sweet. he thought that's how carrots came my okay. father thought wow. that's how carrots came so he brought my sister as a as look the carrots grew Aww. and it was very sweet and sweet. we had to tell dad that he's an idiot well but it's a great plot for a sitcom i guess so in if they, 1985 yeah, if they still yeah, had yeah, those yeah, right. should we we do that well if you make it really filthy dirty yeah Right. Uh, my problem this week, I want to tell you, start with my problem this week, and we'll go beyond that into other questions and other issues, because right. we have many things. But my problem this week that I was thinking about, and I thought you were the perfect person to ask about, is we were, we're both kind of children of show business, right? Mm. Your parents are show people. Mm. My parents, my father is a show person. Mm -hmm. My mother wants to be a show person. She's mm -hmm. like Lucy, she's never mm -hmm. really involved, but always uh, much more social than my father. Um, and my, as a matter of fact, my father worked on the Dean Martin show coming out and, and he met Dean Martin once. Wow. And Dean Martin, his name's Arnie Kogan. My, the, Dean Martin called him Legend. Ernie. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Ernie. Ernie. And that was the last he saw of it. Later on that night, my dad came home and said, I met Dean Martin and my mom said, I had dinner with him. Huh? So my, my, my mom was out with uh, Judy Tannen and and uh, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, wow. and they had and so she spent the night socializing with Dean Martin. Wow! And my father barely scratched the surface, and he worked for <laughs> Dean Martin anyway. The show business. When I first uh, recognized it, when I was five years old, I was my father moved us all out for the, to work on the Dean Martin show, and I got to see a studio, yeah. and I got to see lights, and I got to be on the show in a Christmas episode where they had all the people's kids on. I said, "This is a working experience. This is fantastic." Yeah. yeah. And from that point on, I thought I'm going to be in show business. I thought it's a good, interesting life. I didn't know what I would do and where I would fit in, but it just seemed kind of glamorous and mm. fun and there are people in tuxedos and there's uh you know dean martin's kind of boozing it up and it's hot girls and it's like a it's a it was a world of interesting show business and collaboration and fun mm. and then i became a, a comedian and groundlings whatever then became failed at that became a writer did okay but show business isn't what i thought it was going to be right show business and even now even less so sure um it's not the 24-hour party people thing no. it's a lot of work it's a lot of commitment it's obviously a lot of competition i knew that kind of growing up but i thought once you sort of get into a place there was a a comfort level or a a glamour none of that turned out to be true and i'm trying to reconcile now having been in the industry for about 40 years what, did I make a mistake? Like, is this, <laughs> is this uh, you know, what I've had just as good a time selling cars or, you know, selling insurance or making candles or whatever it is that I would have done otherwise. Mm. And I don't know, did you have, do you have the same experience? Did you have expectations? You, you just said literally everything I was about to say. Okay. So but we're it. done. Now, what were your expectations going? Your father, tell, first of all, your father was a, a performer, but it was no, manager. No, no, he wasn't a performer. My, my father was an agent. Agent, um, right. And his father also was an agent. Okay. Um, let me start there. His, 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 my grandfather's name was Willie Weber, and for decades was a kind of a, a, a scary legend of okay. a guy because he had, at the turn of the 20th century, was an orphan 
in uh, Harlem in New York City and then grew up and fell in with the Jewish mob. Okay. And um, uh, which I think they showed a lot in Boardwalk Empire and uh, and went to prison, did all that stuff mm -hmm. and then um, had some other exploits. And then the logical next step was that he became an agent and manager of, <laughs> <laughs> right, of sure. performers. Right. His early uh, acquisitions were a young uh, Jackie Gleason and mm -hmm. a young Don Rickles. Oh, wow. Who he then let go both times to be taken and represented by other uh, far more uh, successful and so, well-known. So he was a mensch. Well, perhaps. Okay. Um, uh, he may have just been... Um, a connection between the a bridge between the mob and the entertainment industry of which there sure. was a uh, palpable one. sure uh i think they controlled a lot of the clubs in new york famous yeah. copacabana and many others and he no, it's like you got to book my my client and they would say but we don't no no you got to book yeah. my client and they would say oh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely right. yes. yes of course right. I, he may have been that i don't know right. a lot of that is mysterious god i wish he was my agent <laughs> holy <laughs> shit oh. i want i want people to be threatened when they hire me he was uh, uh, like I say, a dark legend. He was yeah. S s scary. Yeah. Um, but again, he was a diminutive, wiry guy. And then my father uh, found himself in the same business after probably not wanting to be in it for reasons which uh, I'll, I'll I will share with you mm -hmm. that have to do with our question, right? Which is the realization that this isn't as fun as it seems, <laughs> right? Um, and but anyway, and he became an uh, an agent and, and manager of singers in the Borscht Belt and uh, occasionally Vegas and Atlantic City. His big act was a guy named Pat Henry, who was a Chicago-based comedian who opened for Sinatra for twenty yeah, years. Pat Henry, Pat huge. Cooper, Pat Henry, all the yeah. Pats. You know, not Pat Carroll. No, okay. And um, or Pat McCormick. And uh, so that's the background that I was more or less born into my mm. mother parenthetically had been a, a nightclub singer and was great and had won all the uh qu equivalents of the time of um uh uh you know uh, america's greatest blah 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 right. or, or or you know all the what am i all these uh, talent contests, talent contests. Contest, yes. she won the arthur godfrey mm -hmm. con all that stuff and then she gave it up at probably around 20 years old to become a wife right. and mother okay so when i was a little kid uh did she make records uh, n no, but I have recordings of her okay. taken directly from these um, shows, Chance of a Lifetime and Arthur Godfrey, and they are uh, great. Yeah. And she acts absolutely could have had a career, yeah. without a doubt, uh, but she didn't. And she has a lot of regrets, but she's not bitter about it. Um, and so as a young child, I observed all the things that you did, which was this kind of very engaging, glittery technically you know lots of equipment and lights and microphones right. and fancy jazzy people which was a real stark contrast to my upbringing lower middle class upbringing in queens right, right. um and the, i began to then go backstage and that's when i realized that there was some other element to the incredibly attractive uh showbiz that the world, I guess, is attracted to. Right, 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 right. And Backstage it, isn't as pretty as the on It's stage. not. Yeah. It's not. Right. And it hovers precariously close to uh, uh, seedy, dismal, scary, <laughs> yeah, right. dirty, sure. illegal, weird, yeah. off-putting, which as I grew older, actually enhanced the attraction <laughs> right, right. of this business. Sure. Because it's dark and a little forbidden and all that stuff. As extra stuff. Well, extra I, stuff. That that is true of all of showbiz. All of right. showbiz is, is, you know, the the most glorious Fred Astaire movie took place in a shitty warehouse. Right. Like every. Right. Every, I, I, I worked on Broadway right. a handful of times. Broadway, which is the pinnacle of everybody's dreams of being a, a theatrical performer, and um, the dressing rooms were shitholes. Right. And <laughs> which were. So strange but like i say added to the mystique that well you know it gives us a kind of toughness right really not it's just uh it's weird but that that's sort of the the superficial uh contrast that you first 
Right. Grok, but it's still, you know. okay, but still there's cool stuff going on. Absolutely. And cool people and, you know, and there's, there's still all that stuff. There's texture. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, and, and uh, like I say, that contrast was part of the uh, kind of inherent attraction. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is exciting. It, it's like oh, so many characters in literature or art are these broken souls. Oh, They're not I'd... just pure... What's going on? Are we watching? What's happening? You two? Are we going to watch something on cable? <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, I want to see the rest of the yeah. uh, the mighty gemstones. Uh, I want to meet Bean and Mason. <laughs> okay. You know. I know. I, I, I thought you guys would just keep going, but you didn't. Well, no. But oh, we shut off? Well, no, we didn't, we didn't shut off. I just noticed that something off. changed. All right, that's fine. If it happens again, it's fine. Leave it blank. It's all right. But the, I see my reflection in the wide shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> so all right. All right. It's not there, so okay. I can only stick to your singing. Right. But we're still recording, right? We are still recording. See, this is this is this proves our point. Yeah. That uh, as slick as this show comes across, oh, and it's very slick. So slick. Yeah. That it's actually each one of these, held together by yeah. dust and paint. Each one of these episodes <laughs> costing me one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, <laughs> which I uh, I honestly it. don't feel is right. That's right. Uh, I may it's be taken right. advantage of, but they, you know, the water's free. The water machine is free. Is so that's... the water free? <laughs> I doubt that. To me, for the hundred twenty-five thousand, <laughs> I don't get charged extra. But okay, so so you you came, but you came into show business about the same time I did. You went, although yeah. no, not true. You went to a performing arts high school. Yeah. So you made a, a decision earlier than I did. Yes, I. Uh, in keeping with, I guess, with my parents predilections i found myself doing commercials as right, a kid right and but i didn't have any particular passion or aim i just i was always probably like you kind of bit of a class clown and snarky right. doing imitations imitations that don't matter anymore ed sullivan <laughs> james cagney sure you know the only it didn't thing i matter that james cagney did not matter in 1974 it, but it still had some cachet <laughs> with people who were in who's, business people who saw variety shows people who saw right, variety right, shows exactly. i mean the only one that i do now is burt lancaster and i love doing burt lancaster nobody knows who he is anymore that's that's it's true nobody knows who anybody should do a little bit of burt please okay i grew up in harlem <laughs> and i was very self-conscious about the freckles on my shoulders and so <laughs> you got the stare though that's the, the thing stare, you the really stare. did the the stare of it yeah the, let me tell you something yeah that's good when i work with the shirley booth <laughs> and come back to little Sheba. Anyway, nobody cares. No. But it's fun to do. Uh, do you ever work with him? Burt Lancaster? Lancaster? No, no, no. Okay. I had a All few right. nice, uh, right. amazing experiences with, right. with icons. So you're going, to, you're going to performing arts high school. You went to, you arts. did commercials. You said, I'm an actor. I'm going to go to I performing arts. I went to arts. high school performing arts. And then this was in the 1970s in New York City. When everything looked like uh, something from the French Connection, right. it was all filthy, tawdry, and yeah. filthy, and wet, and <laughs> you know, sticky. Uh, but I had my first experiences with um, serious pursuit of things artistic and things theatrical, right. and it was great. It was great. And then from there, I went to uh, another great uh, theater uh -oh. program. You know, right. The They're Siren. Coming. I gotta go. Yeah, no, again. No, no. <laughs> Didn't you burn your fingerprints Yikes, with acid? The cops. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I went to uh, called State University SUNY at SUNY Purchase, mm -hmm, sure, which is a great school. And then started working and and started pursuing a, uh, an, an actor's life in what was a very kind of linear way, as opposed to today. The linear way being, I want to be an actor. I have photographs. I knock on doors. I show the photograph. Right. I read some stuff, and if they don't like me, then I go to the next one. Right. But now. There's uh, video things, and then COVID made it difficult, and casting is remote, and all this stuff. Right. And you have likes on, but there's Twitter still, and Instagram. There's and still kind stuff. of virtual knocking on doors. Actors are trying to get their 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 faces seen by casting directors, right. and so. But I would not know how yeah. to um, uh, advise a young actor right. on how to go about that. I realize yeah. that the, the you know my I'm an analog guy in a digital world, right? And so okay. I I don't know what to do. Uh, yeah, everybody's. But that's just a feature of our age versus their age. Everybody right. knows how to record themselves in some way, shape, or form. I can't do it. I know they spend a lot of money, like the actors I know, spend a lot of money on lighting. Yeah, the and, ring light. Yeah. <laughs> What's, I wish I came up with the ring light. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, but, it's, but where were, the, for you, what have been the sort of, the dream was this and the reality is this. Where What's the difference? Yeah. 
Well, I, again, superficially, the first thing I noticed was what we discussed, which was you go on Broadway and you realize that the basement looks like something out of uh, French Resistance, <laughs> and uh, the 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 you know the dressing rooms are filthy or you know, exposed brick, not like this. It was just weird. Right. It was a, a facade. Right. Um, uh, similarly, I after having a, a really wonderful theater education, which centered on the communal aspects of theater. Uh, and in fact, we studied group theater, which uh, you can look it up if anybody ever sees this, mm -hmm. you know, which was an ensemble and right. it was in the 30s and it had right. that kind of commie <laughs> well, you know, sensibility about it. Not really. Springing but, from the Depression. Yes, right, of course. Right. And I and this is what I thought it would be like. I thought it would be everybody helping each other and being right. helpful. I was uh, quickly, um, what's the word, disavowed? No, I was quickly dis... Something. I was disappointed. I was, I was quickly disappointed okay. by the reality that that wasn't the case. That um, a, a lot of the times people were in it for themselves and they were not going to help you. Not even at all. in the no, context right. of performance. Right. But, but over to, yes, because it's a competitive business and some people are super competitive, even if they're not right for the part, right. they're not going to call you and say, this is perfect for you. Right. Some people don't want you to have that success. Some right. people want to have both of you not have success right. until right. they have success. Yeah. But over the course of time, you found a group of people. Yeah who are kindred spirits right. who you can lean on and I, I i see that you know you have your friends and you go you on fa on the social medias yeah, yeah. i see you're out to lunch and, sure. and read with the eric mccormick's of the <laughs> yeah, world yeah, and those kind right. of yeah. so so you have your your core group of friends it, it took a while to yeah. find them and acquire uh, the, uh that community which i thought which I know is so helpful for me personally, and I think helpful in a business context as well. For sure. Um, and I wasn't used to the uh, the element of of competition and the cutthroat aspect of competition. I, I grew up at a very, again, in in these these uh, theater schools where everybody was quite helpful and was really wonderful and right. emotional and intimate and all that stuff. Um, and and then later on. Um, after I was making a living and able to comport myself reasonably well as a human being in this industry. And um, I want to say in the last decade, I began to um, think more deeply about your original question, right. which is what what is behind it or what are the things, what is disappointing about it? Right. You know, and, um, and I began to question why I became, why I took this path and if I was really enjoying it. What was I doing? Right. And did my... And were you? Uh, Are you? I'm not sure. Okay. Because um, my original concept of being an artist and being around other creative people and constantly exploring um, had been reduced to a very rote kind of existence, a rote job, mm -hmm. which paid me pretty right. well. And, and uh, after years of not being paid mm -hmm. well and all that stuff, so... I, I I earned it right. in the context of being in show business, um, and um, and it afforded me a, a good lifestyle and a relative ease with my family that was we were raising and right. and all that stuff. But, well, if you're looking for something more like the group theater or that collective experience that you're, is it something that you can make? Is that something that you can create? Well, it, it is something that you can create. But what I found was that it would require. Um, some compromise and sacrifice. Oh, sacrifice. That, sacrifice. Oh, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Uh, and uh, you'd have been a shitty Mayan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I'll it, find a heart. They <laughs> want a human heart. I'll yeah, find yeah, a human yeah. heart. It does not yeah. have to be mine. Can I use a cuticle? Exactly. It's going to be, that's yeah, going to be I'll, I'll bite, I'll, Can we bite this victim's <laughs> nails down to the right. quick? It's, it, it's yeah. easy. The guys will love it. The guys, yeah. the guys will love it. Right. They will. Yeah. Anyway, look how we're riffing. I know. Um, so, I, but so you don't want to do that sacrifice. You know, you wish that there was that other community. It's interesting. I came from stand up comedy, mm -hmm. cutthroat. Yeah. Everyone's an asshole. Yeah. Um, uh, except for those few exceptions that weren't the Groundlings Theater mm -hmm. improv, mm -hmm. very competitive, mm -hmm. sort of cutthroat. Everybody sees you as the competition because mm. there's only limited space in the main company kind right. of thing. Um, writing writers rooms were the first place I felt like, oh, 
oh okay writer's room and, yeah. we're all gonna we're all in it together yeah. if, if any one of us sucks it's bad for all of us yeah so there's there was more of a camaraderie going on in right. writer's rooms right, than right, i right, found right. as an actor right. as an actor i found it much more cutthroat and competitive yeah because i was in a room when i was an actor i was in a room full of guys in blue shirts and hats that look exactly the way mm -hmm. fat and looked exactly like me. Right. And we're all sitting on couches. Right. And it's like, when they said no to me, it wasn't like they didn't want my type. Yeah. They, they, they clearly wanted my type. They just didn't like me. And it was just very brutal, sort of like, and everybody else knew like, there's only one part for one of us and we're all gonna Well, fight what's for weird it. about being an actor is that you are your product. Yeah. And as opposed to, uh, you know, generally speaking, a writer, isn't the product what they give in yeah. is the paper or uh so they're not you your your entire being right. and reason right. for being is being rejected it's horrifying in that it, it's horrifying well i it's i much for harder. some reason yeah well you have to develop a, a as i say a thick skin and because that's part of the industry and there's a they've got to figure out a way to to kind of cope with that reality right. um who's the guy you lose part <laughs> that i lose parts yeah. to? who's your who's your Jack Lemon to uh, sure. to uh, 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 Tony Randall. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's hard to say because I'm not sure my type is uh, around anymore. I I've managed to actually outlast a lot of uh, oh, people, which has been That'll great. I'll show them. I'll show them. <laughs> I, t I told them I was better. But um, I guess at the time, I my brand was kind of a snarky, uh, amused, likable womanizer right you know right. Rue. and there was a whole world of that in the 80s and 90s there were tv shows and movies right featuring that kind of ass douchey right. asshole <laughs> and i was doing right. it and right. i actually for a while i had beaten out the competition and got so the show you were wins. the number was, one douche i was in Hollywood. Number one douche uh, okay yeah, that's right a, a douche and um but now it's weird because the business Generally speaking, uh, skews younger. Right. And I'm 62, and by the time people see this, I'll probably be 68. Yeah, it's true. It's good. And, uh, the post production process and, uh, is really, really but it's rigorous. Down. It's good. No, it's very good. No mistakes by the end of it. <laughs> I mean, the the thing goes out, but everything else besides yeah, from the thing right. going out. Yeah. Um, and um, and also there is there has been an, a necessary injection of of diversity in right. product and in in, in, in in talent and everything, and so my type of person kind of white snarky guy is not is not in that demand right, really right right um so you know i've managed to outlast a lot of a lot of people well, because you have great. you do other things than what that snarky guy well i i do i well i i try to i try to be versatile right um and and also one of my main lessons i learned and uh, was be nice that helps be nice. That helps. And yeah. even more than or as much as being good at what you do, because I would never um, I would never deign to give any. And that's a word. I would never never give a young actor advice on how to act because right. I'm still trying to figure it out. Right. But I would just say, be nice. Right. Don't be an asshole and try not to be competitive in a kind of destructive sense. Right. You can compete with yourself, mm -hmm. get better. But that type of stuff is really bad. People don't realize the guy getting you coffee may be a big director in three years absolutely they, always don't. be nice to pas because you'll be begging <laughs> you, them for work you yeah, don't know right. and people don't real people don't understand the fullness of how random show business works sure. and they also don't understand and this is something i had to learn that people as you meet them in a particular time are not the same people in terms of their talent and growth that you meet them later on right, right, right. like you have an image of some person and then years the, the there's a particular very famous comedy producer director who i was very dismissive of early on mm -hmm. and uh 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 uh, his name runs with Rudd Papatow. Sure. Uh, and uh, cause I don't want to say names. I don't uh, want anybody yeah. to get the wrong idea. Rudd Papatow. I don't want Rudd to hear about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, he was a right. He was a stand up, yeah. not a medium yeah. level stand up. Right. And he had written a, a par fairly shitty spec script they showed me. And then I just thought forever, that's who that guy was. Yeah. And then time has shown me that. I am the idiot. No, he's much. He is much uh, more talented than than I gave him credit yeah, for. Well, we're all works in progress, and, and a we're friend all of mine evolving. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's a great guy, and uh, I, it's 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 interesting that we're all on journeys, and and, uh, and and one of the one of the things that I had to also learn was that 
show business is a living, evolving, right. changing thing. And you're able to change and live and evolve with it until you're not, until something else comes uh, comes along and then you have to accept that. And Could you it. have been something else? What would you have been if you were something else? I used to want to be an artist, mm -hmm. thanks in, in part to my uh, devotion to Mad Magazine. Okay, okay? And sure. I was constantly copying all the Mort Drucker and uh, Jack Davis and Sergio Aragones, and I was constantly doing that, and I thought right. maybe I could do this. Um, do you still draw or paint? I don't draw okay. as much as I used okay. to. I was doing doodles. A long time ago, I thought I could really do this, and because I'd met when I was a foot messenger in New York City, back in the days with beepers, Sure. Um, I went up to Neil Adams' office. Neil Adams it was fantastic, legendary, I think died a few mm. years ago. Right. DC artist known for his incredible detail, Batman and great artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went up to his office to deliver something. And I probably mentioned that uh, I like to do right. a little bit. And he said, well, you know, here's what you do. Get a few pages of a, a comic book, DC, whatever, and do it yourself. You know, do the borders, do the pencils, forget the inks. Mm -hmm. And 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 then that's your um, audition. So go and you make an appointment, sit in the room, sit in the waiting room with other, and they'll look at your stuff. And I did that. Okay. And I worked for several days okay. on um, uh, on uh, and the drawings. I yeah. forget what I what which comic book I redid. And then I sat in the waiting room with a bunch of other people, and I had it on my lap. I didn't have a portfolio or anything. And I happened to glance at the young man next to me who had his portfolio open, and he was able to draw the figure like Michelangelo. Right. Right. And I I looked at that and I took my stuff and mm -hmm. walked out. Right. Okay. That was it. So basically I burned all my boats. Right. You and I just devoted everything right. to this. That's uh I I think that I could have been a lawyer. I think I could have been uh not a doctor. I'm just not capable of that, but but something like that, maybe a vet. Maybe a dentist, some some angle of of uh, medicine. I think I could have. I think I could have been a, a business manager kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of stuff. Like I don't know where I would have found the fun. Right. But but I could have done that. And I and I, my friends who are lawyers and and many of them hate their jobs, but many of them love them. Yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. it just it's whatever that that fit was. But this job has shown me. It got me lots of interesting friends, mm -hmm. um, lots of, uh, uh, you know, creative fun. And it's been good for a long time. It has its real downs, which is it's hard to constantly, constantly, constantly get work sure. all the time. Sure. You have to find a new job all the time. It's hard to uh, sustain a reputation mm -hmm. to sort of get out there and you got to show new work all the time right. and be be involved it's 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 a lot of hustle in that maybe it's the same hustle in lawyering i don't know or anything yeah i, I you know uh I, I, a lot of it has to do with expectations and how that changes over the years so years ago my wife at the time and i used to love just for fun as we drove around if we saw a sign that said open house we'd go in and go into the open house right. and just check it out and it was potluck in a sense. It was just a surprise. And we went into some house in the Hollywood Hills, a relatively small, pokey kind of cottage. And on the walls were the history of this couple, this family that lived here. And the pictures went back years and years and years. So they were, I assume that the couple who's selling was old. Right. And they were pictures of their life in theater. I did not know who they were. There were mm -hmm. tons of kind of one sheets of shows they did. The most happy fella, right. flower drum song, you know, these classic shows. And then cast photos and photos of these two actors in action, black and white, great photos taken on stage. Did not know who the hell they were. And I think I was able to glance at or figure out who, the name. I didn't, I'd never heard of them. And at that moment, I realized that you can be happy, especially in the arts, without having to be rich or famous. But right. the expectation for probably everyone who sets out is rich is celebrity and wealth. Well, now that's all it is. That, I guess that's all it right. is. But I, I, I still think that there is a way to find happiness, and you yeah. reference happiness, without having to succumb to the expectation of wealth. I'm not saying, you know, starve to death, but um, there's got to be a way for the, the, the candle maker right. <laughs> to really 
understand and love that they're performing something that brings them happiness, even though they might not be, you know, selling candles to uh, the goop. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Ooh, I guess her vagina smells like a candle. Yes. It's beautiful. I, I don't know. Yes. She, uh, if you put enough cedar up there. Sure. Then your vagina smells exactly and like a candle. Can Gwyneth Paltrow's clitoris hold a flame? <laughs> You know what? That's an experiment we'll only we'll, we'll have right to find back. out <laughs> exactly. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just thinking about a tampon is kind of like a wick. There's there are ways there are ways to make these things work. Yeah. Um, but uh, I had a, a, a now I my 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 mind is now <laughs> in another place. Yeah, but Gwyneth, but uh, so well at one time. We, I tried to work on a show with you, which was a uh, a pilot about a guy in a nightclub. Oh yeah, long time ago, and uh, we there was some talk of, of doing this. Is you were excited about playing the owner of a nightclub? Oh yeah, who could uh, maybe sing sometimes, but also do oh, other right, things. Right, sure. And hmm. and is that because of your parents and how you grew up? Yeah, it was a world that I thought I understood. It was a world that I. Th think w was at least at the time attractive i say at the time because now everybody is so familiar with the backstage right. kind of conceit that it's not that big a deal in fact m me too i hunger for stories that are just regular folks i really <laughs> can't stand stories about actors trying to make right. it it makes me sick yeah but at the time i thought this was be this would be good but also given um uh my understanding of that type of character and that type of world it would afford me an opportunity to go deep and maybe go dark and and play a lot of contrasting right uh you know qualities so yeah yeah well it died so bad it's it sure too bad. did <laughs> so too bad it sure did baby um but uh, uh it's it's interesting to me to think of a world where every time you enter into a, an arrangement with somebody you like a creative partnership new things can come right i don't know maybe the, the, that's true in other businesses i i don't know that is true in other business i don't know if a of a a, a personal injury lawyer getting another personal injury lawyer together right. with a new personal injury lawyer is like this yeah. is now this is the magic like i don't know that that's i was the case. i was never a competitive person myself mm -hmm. and i always did a lot better in um you know, in, in consorting with somebody or, or working with somebody. Right. And, and I loved, loved, loved that. Oh, I still do. Right. Much better, much easier, much more creative. It's interesting. My, my dad, as a writer, had a more limited world of what he was doing. Did he have a partner? Did he use or he over has, the years? Over the years, he had many partners. Right. Uh, several partners, but mostly he was a single. But but every right. now and then he had partners. But they worked for, you know, he worked for, let's say, variety shows, Dean Martin, yeah. Carol Burnett. And then he did uh, uh, the Newhart and and the Bob Newhart show and, right. and all the regular sitcoms. But he at the same time, he was also writing for Mad Magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was also writing for Borscht Belt Comics. Yeah. And he was writing for, he did books. He ghost wrote books for people. And he's an authentic humorist. Yeah. Yes. He wasn't just a comedy writer. This was a guy with a huge swath of of humorous material. Right. Or right. a guy with a lot of bills. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> it so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I just like both. You need something to drive you. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's your humor. It's like, I got to get my humor out there. Sometimes it's, I just got to pay the bills. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, so I don't know. I, but what the question of what drives me is a whole separate question. It's like I'm 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 very unless there's a gun to my head, the least the thing I want to do least is sit down and write. I, that's what they say. Yeah. Right? Writing yeah. is, why? Is it too solitary? Is it, Yes. are you afraid of getting to the core of who no, you are? No, it just, yeah. You're, it, the big thing is the same reason people are f acting, same problem that people have in all endeavors is they're afraid it's going to suck. Mm. So you're about to go on stage and they're, what are those butterflies? Yeah, yeah. Those yeah. butterflies are, what if I sh what if I'm People shit? People won't like me. Yeah. People won't like me. So that's that's the thing. And when every time you sit down at the typewriter or the typewriter, look how well I am. Typewriter. The typewriter. What's that? Yes. When you sit and carve <laughs> in marble the script, uh, you sit at the computer. You're there's a voice in your head mm. that says, "Oh, they're going to find out you're terrible now." Fascinating. Yeah. And then you're going to be that. That's then you have to drown that voice out by writing. Yeah. And then eventually, when you start writing, it's fine. Yeah. Just like when you start performing. Do you prefer to work oh. in a room with other writers, or or uh, I do prefer, you like the? I like to work in solitary. a noisy, crowded cafe. 
Seriously? Yeah. But also, do you partner with other writers? I'm I sure do. you have, yeah. When I partner with other writers, it's much easier. It's much easier, Much man. easier. Because, A, there's a deadline. We're going to meet Tuesday right. and right. sit here and do this thing. And so there's another person counting on you, so you're going to get the work done. Also, there's another person, if you're writing a comedy, there's another person either laughing or not laughing at right. the thing you just said. Right. So that's a little comforting if you've written a joke and somebody says, I like that. That's good. Yeah. That's comforting. Yeah. Uh, so partners are better up until they're not better. Up until the moment when they, you have something gold and this guy says, that's not good. And you go like, oh my God, you're so wrong. That's perfect. Right. Then what do you do? Right. You have to throw out the thing that you think is great yeah. and then find another thing that you think is not nearly as good and put that in. And that's hard. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I mean, but but it's still, Shabbos is still fun and interesting. The, the propensity of... People who are famous for fame reasons makes it a little shittier, makes yeah, all of showbiz no. shittier. Yeah. The, the the Kardashian effect of oh, people man. who are famous for just being famous. It sucks. Uh, Taylor Swift is good. Yeah. Taylor Swift is talented. She cares about her art. Yeah. She she puts on a great show. Right, right. You know, I know you'll hear a lot of people my age say, what, what's so great about Taylor Swift? She's awesome. She's awesome. And also because I think she takes her creativity seriously. Right. Not for granted. And and she it seems at least she understands not that I know I couldn't name one of her songs but from what I know of how she comports herself right. in the culture it's uh, she takes responsibility for her work right. and also cares about her audience and loves her fans in a way that's tactically really smart right but also maybe it's a, a sign of who she actually is and maybe where we all need to go right. as I mean nation, you could say the same know? thing about Bruce Spring it was Bruce Spring yeah, it's really smart right. of him to like cultivate his fan base and to be you know caring of them and when he sees them on the street he hugs them and sometimes right. he gives them tickets and that's really smart but i think he actually likes people he, he might yeah and I, he actually he it, collects it, people but and also i think it's a, it's an important component in art yeah to have a relationship with the people who appreciate it um and and a direct relationship in, as directly as possible right and well, uh, well why do you have gavin de becker over there stopping fans from cutting to touch you well i've had a stalker since uh, <laughs> 1965 oh okay when i was three years old i was Shock four that stalker old. still alive i mean I, we think he's still alive <laughs> Um, do you, how are you with fans? Obviously, <laughs> fans. I mean, um, I, look, I, when people I, come up to you yeah, at dinner, yeah, well, almost always at dinner. I, I've always had a, a, I like to think a healthy um, attitude towards celebrity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I, I, as you said, the Kardashian effect. Anybody can be famous for any number of reasons. Well, mostly for having sex on film. That's a good one. <laughs> That's the main reason. Um, but yeah, and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I remember Lewis Black used to do something where he used to say that if you put a bowl of shit on, on TV, people would tune in for it. People would tune into it. So it may, and in a way, it makes no difference what you do, who you do, right. who, or who you are. So um, uh, I absolutely enjoy. I think he's wrong about the bowl of shit, by the way. Because huh? I pitched the bowl of shit show you and did? it did not go. Well, it did not go. What, what kind of ball? <laughs> was it clear? No. No. You need people. You want a, an opaque bowl so people have to do this. Oh, okay. There okay. you go. That was my mistake. Um, too obvious. Too obvious. Yeah. That's yeah. always been your mistake. Yeah, that's my it's problem. Been your weakness. That's right. Um, but uh, but I, I think I, I realized right away that I had a degree of celebrity that felt good, mm -hmm. but also I realized that it, it, it felt good and uh, I recognized why it felt good. Yep. It gave me affirmation, but it didn't. I, I didn't believe that I, uh, what's all I'm trying to say? I, I still was very aware of my too big for your britches? No, I just, look, mm -hmm. I, I, I came from a lower middle class upbringing and, and we always, I, I always cleave to that side of myself. I don't think that I'm, well, I'm a, I'm a demigod right. because I was on TV <laughs> I, or I can get a, whoa, I can get a table whoa, whoa. at a restaurant, a demigod. <laughs> but that's what, that's what a, a lot of people yeah. kind of take it to that level. All right, but I mean, it is different. And it to... allows them to objectify the rest of the world and it gives them a sense of, uh, that, not that they, that they deserve this. They deserve this. And the reason why you're not a celebrity is because you don't deserve it. You're saying me specifically. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're absolutely right. But, but I just think that it's it's a product of our industry but and our business. But you know, your kids grew up, your yeah. boys grew up and, and uh, with their dad as a celebrity yeah. who has gone to celebrity style things, mm -hmm. which include 
like that charity thing that you went to that you hosted i saw may include golf tournaments may sure. include sure. you know being invited to premieres yeah. and all this kind of stuff that's you know your kids are growing up in that world yeah so they see you not as just a regular dad but a dad who that's his job but they also see me um uh trying to understand that phenomenon for what it is yeah rather than accept it as as the a way of life well i th i think I don't know many people who in our world who think celebrity equals complete validation. Like mm -hmm. that's a very rare mm -hmm. uh, form of psychosis yeah. Like because we're all aware that the, so much luck happens to be, you know, what, how you get a job and whether the job you get was successful or not. You know, right. wings could have been a failure yeah. and therefore your whole trajectory could have been different. You got lucky to be on that show. You helped in making that show great. But, you know, also the, the, the people who came together in that moment, it was the moment for that particular show and it happened, it could have died. It could, it didn't die. That was great. So it's not just I'm good. It could be I get proud of my work, but also I'm really lucky. I, I absolutely yeah. agree with you. I also think that uh, uh, too many actors forget to uh um forget to remember that the reason why they're given so much credit is due to the work of all the people who've gone into the making of whatever right. show right. or shows right they love the character you played that's, that's not right. necessarily you that's right and you're not the reason right. for the success you're the face of the success of the show right. but you're part of it you're part of it you're, you're part of it you brought it to that's life right. you that's right it, it, things if anybody could just do that job that you do then anybody would but people can't people can't just bring words to life yeah. not everybody does that I think it's. I also think it's a. It's a, a real temptation uh, for people to. I'm sorry uh, to disagree with you. To to believe that they do deserve this, and they. Right. And, and uh, well, maybe maybe your observations are more uh, valid in the writer world. Maybe is, I don't know. Are you, know, you talking specifically about Eric McCormick? Because he if you is are a monster. <laughs> okay, but here's a guy. Oh, right. sorry about Eric McCormick. Right. Eric McCormick from Will and Grace, and now he's currently on Broadway doing this play called The Cottage, being directed by Jason Alexander. Yeah, very nice. Um, he loves show business. He loves it. He is a real, he loves every aspect of it. He loves the smell. He loves the good, the bad, the the ugly. He, and he revels in it, but he's still a completely regular down to earth guy. I mean, he's, he can be flamboyant and fun mm -hmm. and big and in a crowd, all heads would turn to him if if or if aliens said give us your give us a person who's most likely to perform we would all look at him <laughs> and he'd be fine about right. it mm -hmm. but he's still a, a grounded individual okay um on, it's it's difficult especially when you make a lot of money in this industry when you have a lot of people coming up to you it's very affirming and it could cause a little bit of drunkenness it could cause I guess you to so. I think that there's not there's something nice in that in being affirm you know, like like the candle maker doesn't get that a kind of affirmation mm -hmm, necessarily mm -hmm. every day. I mean, sometimes somebody will light his candle, go like, call him the next day. He was the perfect thing to end my <laughs> afternoon yeah, meditation right. yeah. was your candle. But it's nice to have people know your work sometimes. And people are go out of their way to, to be nice about it, which is very nice. Sometimes people go out of their way to be not nice about it. Right. You know, that's they say right. like perfect. Per, say, see you say, make sure to say, I never saw your show. Right. <laughs> like I don't watch. Well, your, the, the, you know. celeb the phenomenon of celebrity for celebrity sake is a real issue. Issue is, yeah. a, is a problem. You know, people use uh, art or even uh, businesses or, or uh, 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 disciplines as a means to become famous. I'm a lawyer in order to become a great TV lawyer. Right. I'm a realtor so I can have my own real estate show. I'm an actor so I can be famous. Right. And that's wrong. That uh, eventually waters down each you know discipline and that, that's a mistake right and show business is as we speak collapsing because of it <laughs> like I, I guess so like it's it's can it's condensing and it's sort of sh sh uh changing shape yeah. in uh in weird ways that we won't know it's until become, a few years from I, now. it was always look uh, it was always about making money but there was an understanding that there's a creative component that needed nurturing and needed you know tending all the time uh people did it in imperfect ways but it was still accepted right. but now now those you know th those have been co-opted by this just kind of profiteering um uh you know uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, he died. Like, you know, he died. It, Get it on tape. Yeah, quick, quick, quick. It's the only thing that's going to make this make podcast money. sing. Let's make money off exactly. his death. Exactly. I just this, this attitude that that takes the human element that takes the creative element out of 
what makes uh, you know art so successful it's, it's hard it's always been a, a a marriage of commerce and art and right. but now commerce is sort of overwhelming the art part. Little, when you take if, if they're talking about ai yeah and they want to take people out of they want to take the actual people that create out of the equation yeah well good luck with that it's, I, well I, I don't think that's that's even possible, even I, if they I could. So. But oh, we'll we'll okay. they'll they're going to try, and hopefully we're going to put some guardrails in place that will stop that from happening. But uh, you know, it's one of those things where if you've ever experienced AI writing something or AI little movie that AI made, yeah. it's like it's oh this is fantastic. Look at it made it out of nothing. Oh, and it's terrible. Yeah. You know, it's like it becomes very clear that but it's then you terrible. Have all these reality shows, which yeah. are arguably bad, right? Uh, but nonetheless, very successful. So people are Well, but are there's being something about it that, then I say there's something about it that's good. If the Hollywood Housewives, Beverly Hills Housewives is bad, and but my wife's watching it. And the reason my wife is watching what it- What is the reason? Is there's something interesting to, uh, particularly to women, about other women fighting with each other and then, and then making up. But we're perilously close to that great movie, Idiocracy. Sure. Where the big hit yeah. was Ow My Balls. Right, but it's not my fight with my friend, it's their fight with their friend, <laughs> okay. and it exercises a muscle in women, particularly. Yeah. I'm, but I'm, it ain't art, man. And I, I don't wanna sound like a snob. I, I just well, think but that- but I mean, uh, John Wick, isn't art necessarily either but, but that exercise a muscle in right. mostly guys right. who go like oh they're fighting and he's gonna win but and i think that even in john wick there is a there's a subliminal artistry and craftsmanship oh absolutely that human beings it's are involved in yeah in, even in the technical right. aspect of it oh, the ballet yeah human yeah. beings are writing the beverly hills housewives I and mean, those those fights aren't real are, are there oh yes are they human beings yes <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're saying this week you're gonna fight with this you're gonna call her a bitch and yeah. you're gonna do it say it to this person and they're gonna <laughs> That's, that's right. I mean, that must that must be what's happening. They can't just decide to call every week somebody calling somebody a bitch. It's got to be a, a, a special fight that's been prepared. And I it's think eventually written. this is going to be something called podcast wars, <laughs> where there are enough podcasts now where they're going to have, you know, podcast uh, Olympics and then podcast fights. The reason I got into podcasting is I thought there wasn't enough podcasts. Not enough. Was that a mistake? Not enough. I think it was maybe a mistake. Yeah, that that uh, I didn't really, I didn't do the research. Yes. I didn't look at the amount of podcasts. There absolutely has yeah. to be no gaps left in culture <laughs> for true. a non-podcast existence. I have a podcast about podcast gaps. Podcast gaps. Yes, yeah, which I think you should, I think you really would enjoy. Podcast gaps. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think we've solved my problem, all right. sort of. Well, not really. It was just, it's unsolvable. It's an anxiety that I need to express anxiety. that it's not exactly what I thought it would be, but it's still maybe the better choice I've made because it's what else could I have done? There are more opportunities for positive things in, in your life as a result. That's true. Know? And I can still express myself in the form of a script or in the form of an improv or the form of stand-up routine or whatever right. it is in ways that I think are v valuable to me. But I wonder if perhaps people who work in slaughterhouses yes. can have this kind of camaraderie with their fellow slaughterers. I'm sure that they do. There you go. Absolutely. I'm not saying I'm not I'm not I think people find friends at work for mm. sure. I think that's not uncommon. It's a just different style yeah. of life and the goal the goal of chopping up a cow, maybe there's like the king of the king of of, of the different sections of meats. He's sure. the be he's the best. Yeah. Uh and I'm sure there's the best of those people. But maybe going home every day doesn't dream about chopping up the meat. Mm -hmm. I go home every day thinking about still, this could be a good show mm -hmm. and that should be a show. And why can't I talk about this part of my life and let me examine it, not just for me, but also maybe there's some connective tissue I can find out there in the world uh, creatively and that kind of, that's kind of a fun thing. But also your question can, and especially now this time in my life, I'm beginning to apply these questions to mortality itself yes and the span of life where was it disappointed what were my where was it disappointing what were my aims right what are my conclusions what what you know uh, okay what, well but, but i think disappointment is not constructive but right what do you what do you want to do with the rest of this time right that's constructive uh you know i and and not that we have to answer that question but i would i would add to our conversation that i learned that life uh, takes effort. 
Yes. And that's something that I didn't understand right. growing up. I hate that. Well, <laughs> but it's necessary. That that e even effort on a kind of an uh, you know, ethereal kind of astral level, which is to say have goals, have a sense of purpose and 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 not to forget that right. not to forget that and the courage to carry them out sometimes carry them out sometimes yeah. that's right not just be you know boosted aloft by some vague cultural right. gusts like oh, i'm following the herd or no you right. have to be able to separate yourself um because it's easy to say for, as a writer, it's easy to say, I'm writing a script. It's much harder to actually write that script. Mm -hmm. you, I know a million people who want to be writers who say, there's a show I want to write or a movie I want to write, and they don't write it. And then other people write it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it sometimes it sucks, yeah, but yeah, sometimes, yeah. but at least they wrote it. Yeah, the like they have made. the courage to try to do the thing, have the courage to fail. Yeah. Right, and then get better at it. But so goals now at at uh, if if I'm looking at a horizon of twenty years of maybe maybe twenty years of being you know still having my mind intact, what can I do in the next twenty years is is a really good question. Right, I want to be around for my kid. Right. I want to be around to. Uh, I would like to make jokes. I would like to be on stage more. I would like to do some of that stuff. But right. I don't know what. I don't know. I just pray that twenty years from now you're not having deep regrets about this. <laughs> you know, don't let twenty that years go. from now let it go. The second that the monitor went out a second time, I started really regretting the whole thing. <laughs> like that. Like the monitor went out the first time. That's okay, right. the second time, yeah. I don't know. Now, I mean, at the $125,000 they pay for each and every show. Will people be watching this when they are only, when they've evolved only to brains resting on tongues right. in a kind of a bell jar? Now, it's weird, but also the listeners who aren't even seeing the visual don't That's even right. know what we're talking about. Have no that idea. a monitor went out and then it went out again. That's right. They have no idea. You poor people, get to YouTube or, or uh, Instagram or something like that. Yeah. It'll be on one of those places. Um, <laughs> Western all right, Union. so I know, now I'm, we're going to move on to... Um, it's question time. This is something we call question time. And yeah. what is question time is about 126 questions that have been written out in many different categories, and it's separated by letter and number. So you have to pick a letter between A and G and a number between 1 and 18. And then I will see the question that, that is on the grid. It's very random. Oh, yeah. you, <laughs> somebody okay. get him, wake him up. Is All right. Wake him up? All right. Uh, C-17. Oh, you sunk my battleship. That's a terrible, terrible question. Okay. Do not ask that question. All right. All right. All right C-17 is, oh. This is good. How do you find purpose and meaning in your daily life? How about that? And what activities or goals help you feel fulfilled? Goodness, that's really wild. See, you thought these were shitty questions, yeah, but there's a life wrong. question there to wrong. make you think. The point of me. <laughs> uh, again, I have to refer to the fact that I've reached the age that I've reached. And in uh, fairly recent years, I want to say probably 10 plus 12, 13 years, I have begun to live with more effort and more awareness. What what way? How are you efforting? Right. Um, it sounds corny, but I wake up every morning. I'm not religious in any way. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in that stuff. But I do believe in the physics of positive thinking. Okay. Positive. You have some um, affirmations in the morning? Uh, I have some affirmations. I've, I've had a bunch of people in my life who have who have left this plane Mm -hmm. died yeah and i remember them uh by name and i visualize them and i thank them believe it or not that, uh, and that, that list is getting longer and longer oh, holy smokes <laughs> it, it's it's about you know and i yeah. do it fast right okay uh, it's about a minute or wow. two of, of you know um and that kind of grounds me and then i um but but, but hold off on that sure. this is very fascinating to me right. so you say the names of people who have been yes. important in your life yeah. and yeah. you thank them for what they gave you i say thank you for being in my life thank you for giving me the love um that i've wanted and uh, thank you for the abundance that you are bringing me so i've ascribed a kind right. of activity to them and do you carry that gratitude and their memory with you the rest of the day. I try to. Okay. The the problem with that is it makes me f 4 seconds away from crying at any given moment. Really? Yeah. So 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 you can't 
separate out the loss, the mourning from the love and gratitude? Well, uh, like I say, I, I, it's like I start my day, the push I give myself is the push that sends me in whatever given direction. And so, and the rest of the day I kind of cope with, I deal with. What I try to do is, is not to take anything for granted. And I try to rely on empathy. I try right. to not judge people as harshly as my impulses would uh, yeah. suggest to me. I do something similar in the mornings, which is I get up and I find the most deviant porn site I can go yeah, to. Absolutely. And then I just, That's right. I just g go at it. No, no. And then the rest of the day, I'm just carrying that with me. Listen, cheese curd guzzling <laughs> grannies. Cheese curd guzzling grannies right. is uh, a mainstay. I tried. I try to be grateful in my day. <laughs> I try to be grateful in, in the world. It's hard. It's hard to keep that in your head through the day. Yeah, it yeah, really yeah, is yeah. hard. But I, but I don't, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not tearful at those who have gone so much as I am happy to have had the experience and just as, and I assume that whoever I am is this because of them. Well, I, my tears are not necessarily the joyful grief. tears. Okay. Uh, they are often because of my kind of turbocharged sense of um, empathy. Okay. And this is this is a personal thing that I had to do uh, years ago. I had to develop empathy, not in the kind of uh, Star Trek sense, but mm -hmm. uh, where I'm feeling right. exactly what we feel. Right. But just as, I, I just had to put myself in place of anybody or everybody with whom I have contact. And it just helps me What's, understand. What am I going through right now? Well, you you <laughs> absolutely have something in your left rear molar. Okay, all right. Might be baloney. Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You're the last guy you're to right. buy baloney. Okay. Um, I have only luncheon meats. That's my entire diet. No, it's it's about it's about being nice to people. Okay. Uh, like for instance, we live in L.A. and road rage is a thing, and I made the conscious decision to eliminate that from my day. Okay. And I am now this guy. Right. Or if I get. I'm this, right. and I find that what I put out comes back, and that's what I mean. The physics of that kind of positivity. It's um, uh, and again, I'm, I don't think I'm being too new agey, airy fairy. No, no, but no. I, it's about again being nice as an artist or as right. an actor or something. When you're nice, you get more. So tactically, right, in its basis no, it's, way, I, it it helps. But also, I feel that it's more healing for me. I've had some pain in my life. I've had some tumult and challenges. And rather than uh, resort to kind of hoarding resentment about what might have been or what I wished I'd done, I am learning to let those things go oh, and good. all that stuff. And it, it again, it takes effort. It does. Right. It doesn't just happen. Right. Do you slip back into sure. that regret and why wow, I should have done this and that? that of course. Kind of, stuff? Okay. of course. But I also realize that helping me not do that is the fact that i've been able to as a result of being positive and empathetic i've cultivated a kind of love in my life for my family that absolutely reinforces uh, that track that i'm on and Good. and and i don't have to go back and think of all the horrible stupid shitty mistakes that i, I made what happens when you go out of your way to be kind and show love mm -hmm. to people and then you don't get it back i'm like okay all right and and or i'll think okay they're obviously having issues they're mm -hmm. having a bad fucking day right you know i mean i'm not saying that i would feel i would i would become this guy if somebody were coming at me with a meat cleaver right i'd want to kill them and oh there are there are people in the culture who i have deemed as villainous and I want I want them to be struck by lightning. Right. I want a piano that's being, you know, uh, hoisted on a city street to suddenly snap and fall on them. <laughs> right. But for the most part, cartoon death. You cartoon, wish everyone I want a cartoon, cartoon death. death. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I, that explains your uh, collection of anvils. <laughs> that's very good. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a huge anvil black market. All right. Mm -hmm. You turn in the lights. Murder, murder to act as a mule. Right, yeah, yeah. Like it, my, my asshole cavity is destroyed because <laughs> I've been trying to smuggle anvils. Right. There are and better ways. For years, I was trying to smuggle tropical fish across the border right. in my mouth. Right. It was uh, very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Um, but um, thanks for distracting me. Sorry. No, you were talking about no, but, but the, I, the people who were. If there are people who, who get angry. Shitty days. 
I don't engage with them. Right. I'm, I I try not to. Right. Now, meanwhile, on on uh, it's funny because I'm I'm active on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I found myself engaging with total strangers and getting c- completely head up and twisted up until I have to kind of shake shake my head and say what was that right and i blame the algorithm i blame one's addictive nature i blame all that stuff for inciting and kind of curating rage i I call social media a rage aggregator there is no value in fighting in social media none you're not going to persuade anyone no anything you're shouting into a literal void the only thing you can do yes i think is make connective gestures and you can also buy fantastic pill cases right, and exactly. also amazing right. uh right. what else oh hair pills sure uh, and, yeah. they don't work by the way they're not they're not the hair pills aren't great but here's the thing you have a beautifully shaped head. i have a fine skull mine is like a fucking almond <laughs> you, yours is like right no wow. it's, it's good like, it's good mm. yeah no it's not it's not yeah, bad if you, had to, if you had to lose your hair have a skull like Holy mine spot. i mean you should make molds of that just i to, do you nobody do. i do that's no, i don't been, mean most yeah. of the rest of the day is going to be spent <laughs> making molds of my head okay. yeah just so you know okay. uh all right well i i'm i think that's fascinating that uh and and productive really productive that you finding trying to find the joy in and love in your life from your family and friends and and uh thank god you've never called me about this because i would just but you know as you said in the beginning we're acquaintances we're friends we don't have dinner necessarily we don't call each other and chat and giggle or have pillow fights right but i i don't think that every relationship needs to be like a juggernaut if we meet we suddenly we have to keep going keep going until right. we get deeper and deeper and deeper right. until we go through i completely you agree. know i think it's fine to have something exist on a level where there's space yeah and it works perfectly yeah. for us i have no i have i have friends who i went to uh high school with who i don't see for years and years and years and then i see them and it's like uh, hey it's a, and it's the That's same right. kind of uh relationship if i see you like on the picket line right. or somewhere at a at a at a restaurant hey with it. but every now and then we do talk about having a lunch which yeah. may actually well, have this represents this, a kind of a deepening of our exactly relationship. for sure uh, and and uh, that's one of the reasons why I thought you'd be good here is because you're willing to go deeper. You're I'll willing go. to go a little deeper. That, go. That's fabulous. Um, my next uh, thing, I went. We have no time for more questions because we've just rambled on. Sure. But we have listener mail. Now it's time for listener mail. I have this um, on Twitter, which is now X. Uh, this X. this uh, philosophy Friday, and yeah. I asked my readers on Philosophy Friday to send in questions. Uh, and so this is a question from uh, my readers. This is a question specifically for "Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan," uh, and it's uh, here we go. My question has two parts. The first is, why do you think some people are so young at heart, while others, as soon as they hit sixty or so, just give up and call themselves old? <laughs> All right. Getting older is fucking exhausting, man. It's fucking hard. <laughs> okay. and, and as 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 joyful as I was just, just you know talking about empathy and everything, there are days when I think like this is fucking hard. Right. I'm tired. I'm tired. But is it harder now than it was at forty five? Yeah. Really? Well, okay. So I have two kids. They're they're twenty and twenty two. I think we've talked about yeah. this. To me, this has been the hardest part of of being a parent because it's just psychologically and emotionally draining whereas before it was physically taxing all the diapering and all the right. carrying of things right and, but those were easy tasks right. um what's hard again is wrestling with mortality and wrestling with having to let these people go right. and then wrestling with my body changing right. and how it it hurts to to blink <laughs> and you know i i i people fart themselves right. into heart failure so are you I, saying are you saying that your kids not not being in control of your kids' lives is harder than being in control of your kids' lives. Well, yes, okay. yeah, yeah, because control is an aspect. We think we we want control, right. we think we have control, and we don't, and right. then realizing that is annoying and right. scary. Okay, so but what what but sixty still seems pretty young for to give up in it life. Is. Now, now that said, I had dinner with a a, a fantastic friend of mine, um, and. Uh, and he, I'll, I'll drop his name, Lawrence Fishburne. Okay. Heavy duty. Larry. Don't call him Larry. No, okay. He's a Lawrence. Okay. Uh, you, you know, Larry is Larry, 
Larry Gelbard, Larry Zero David, Larry, Larry David. Right. Lawrence is Lawrence. He's something else. Okay, and and I, I mentioned something about oh, I'm you know I'm tired. I'm sixty two. And he says, well, you know, at middle age, he said, you know, there's more to come. I said, middle aged man. And he looked at me, and I'll have to paraphrase here. And he said, no, no, no. There is lots more to come. Mm -hmm. Middle age, you know, being sixty two, and this is me extemporizing. When we were kids, people who were sixty two looked like they were ninety two. <laughs> That's right. You know, Spencer Tracy Tracy died at sixty seven. He looked like yeah, he looked you know something you dig out of a fucking <laughs> pit, right? You know, and uh, he was sixty seven. Right. We look okay. Well, we don't drink as hard as we don't drink as, as he hard. Did. We don't drink yeah. as hard. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know if I had to well, go a few rounds with Catherine Hepburn. That may have taken some life out of me there too. But I don't know. Wow. But also, well, yeah. But but I'm just. But he he was right, and and I'm not capturing yeah. the actual. No, um, there is more to come. I get it. I yeah. get it. And we're maybe we're younger. I don't know. Maybe we just tell ourselves. We, I I can't tell the difference between people in 1960 who looked ancient and whether they felt any different than I did. But mm. but uh, it did seem like there was a there's a real dichotomy between being an adult. Mm -hmm. And being or being an older, older adult. And now when everybody's kind of a kid. Well, some of that might be because we take our cues from cultural trends and things that we're supposed right. to feel old. Baby boomers wouldn't let themselves get old. If exactly. We, right. If yeah. we de if we uh, detach ourselves from people's expectations and even from our own expectations and from our culture to a certain extent, right. which is, you know, get rid of this shit. Right. He said. So stare at it. it right. You know, that. I bet we will feel better. I recently read two books. Read. Right. Which I haven't done in a long time. Right. And I felt like I had been at a spa. My brain suddenly was ripped. Right. <laughs> you know, it was great. Different than listening to a book. Hunter. Different than listening, although okay. I listen to a lot yep. of books. I do audio books. But reading a book uh, took me out of this kind of low level um, anxiety that I think is, yes, it's sort of curated. It's part of our... Our landscape, it's, it comes out of these phones, it comes out of driving, it comes out of working in the kind of the capitalistic society we're in. It took me away and suddenly I was, um, I felt a lot better. I okay. felt a lot better. Very good. Uh, the second part of this person's question was second, how could society remove the stigma uh, attached to aging, even if some people are still working and thriving well into their 90s? My perspective is at 71. I feel nowhere near elderly mm. and I have so much creative energy to use every day. All the best, Geraldine Hope. Oh, Geraldine Hope. Perfect yeah. name. I don't know. She, hope was all capital letters. It may just be <laughs> she has hope, hope or that's maybe. her name. I don't know. Um. Look, I, 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 I think, again, I, I sort of blame capitalism it, it, that just goes for low hanging fruit. And uh, we can make a joke about being elderly and having low hanging fruit. Right. I won't. <laughs> um, and, and that, yeah, the, I, I hate the, the idea that uh, television was always aiming squarely at, what was it, 18 to 35? Right. There is a. That's over. I guess it's over. Yeah. <laughs> well, but th there's always been uh, those people a, a don't demographic. Want to watch TV. Those <laughs> people do not watch TV. It's only for old people now. Right. But <laughs> but but if you could expand it, to just just in terms of where you target, there are people who are viable and creative right. and absorbent and smart and active who are yes, yeah, seventy one years old. Right. And hey. Uh, capitalists, they like to spend money too. Right. Which is, and I'm not saying that they are not targeted. Right. Certainly there are lots of ads for diapers. Well, and guess who's going to be and... subscribing to streamers and subscribing and That's buying right. cable and not That's cutting right. the cord That's and right. watching broadcast television? Old people. But yet, you know, but they, but inculcated into other cultures is a respect for people of, of yes, of, uh, but that's not uh, elderly people. And it's not that's here not in America. Here. No, that's yeah. not here. But we're even though all, all our founders had white wigs, so it was like old <laughs> drag, right? Well, they were like, well, that was sex to drag. Was trying to hide the lice, drag. you know, that's hide like, the lice. Yeah, hide the lies, hide <laughs> the lies. When you wanna wanna hide the lies, we'll we'll Philadelphia freedom. There, there you go. Sang that song at uh, elementary school. My end elementary school. Philadelphia Freedom. Uh, the graduation from from uh, elementary school. Glee sang. club or was it? Just no, a... it's just the whole school was forced yeah. at gunpoint to sing Philadelphia <laughs> Freedom. I don't know why. It was 1976. That's why. Okay. So did, did you do? Uh, um, did you do uh, uh, nuclear uh, attack drills? 
We did. we did hide under our desk. We yeah. did that, but yeah. it was also you know, California's earthquake country, oh, so right, there's right, other right. other issues involved. But we absolutely hid, hid under that. the desk. Yeah, no, it's it's it was, it was scary. Everything we, was scary. Everything was scary. Yeah, well, the remnants of of the kind of the post war remnants in New York in the '60s were wild. Yeah, yeah. No, you yeah, guys, you stuff. guys went through it. You guys went yeah. through it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for your service, by the way. You're welcome. <laughs> um, now is a uh, the 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 penultimate section of our show or no, don't well, say that just call it the second to last that's like, okay right. <laughs> is, is the moment of joy which mm. has a theme mm. a moment of joy oh it's pretty isn't that pretty uh this is where you get to tell me and you've told me already many things that bring yeah. you joy yeah. but what is is there one thing or something that you could tell our audience that want to share with them the thing that brings you joy i thought waking up and being positive about the day and figuring reading reading it's a little affirmation that that's that hits me hard i mean that's that's a great thing to do mm. i think that's a great thing to do uh for me the thing that still brings me joy are the um uh the the the, the hugs i have with my sons mm -hmm. and uh because they really don't want to be touched or have right. any contact with me or their mother right. Right. they want to get the fuck away from us right so when they Dane, that's right. the proper use of it. Submit. Submit to right. give us a hug. Uh, I hold them so close right. and they're probably thinking like, oh, Jesus Christ. And I, I, I'll i say something like, you'll say, you'll right. say. I got <laughs> and a, they will say. I got a hug the other day from my son where he wouldn't let go. Oh, oh my God. Oh. I know. Yeah, man, it's heavy. I know, it's heavy. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. By the way, all the musical cues we're not hearing, but that our audience is hearing, written by Charlie Kogan. He's... Yeah. great he is great he is great he's great and he's great he's actually my next guest coming in is he yes he is so you might run a into nepo him. it is nepo but i just thought i might quit my category for him was give me five of the worst things i've ever done to you <laughs> and so i want to see wow. if he has the balls yeah. to actually you know you know make believe you shut off everything exactly okay. <laughs> or, or, you know. and and he can leave right? yeah. so okay. so your hugs hugs from your kids which one is alfie the better hugger oh I'm not going to say who. No, they both. They both. They both understand my neediness. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they both understand my sense of mortality and everything. And they, <laughs> my uh, Jack, my older boy Jack, greeted me the other day like, "Oh, there he is, huh? sad clown." <laughs> he said, "Okay, sad clown." And indeed, I was listening to. I'm such a fucking idiot. I was listening to music that was making me cry. You know, like, like Ness and Dorma. I love and I that. pulled up. And he's like, you know, sad clown. <laughs> I wanted to kill him, but oh, he was right. He's genius. Yeah, That's fabulous. Yeah. They both, they both when, when, you, when you're identified and you cannot deny it, that's you got to give you respect. I so wish I could, uh, I would be around or at least somehow be able to hear uh, them talk about me, talk about us the way we talk about our parents. Right. You know, I'd be really curious. Well, um, me too. That'd be very interesting to hear. Yeah. I, I don't know that we get a window on that no, ever. No, 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 but no, of course not. Uh, last thing I want to ask you. Last um, penultimate question. Uh, which is nothing to do with anything, but of my quote unquote actor friends, mm -hmm. you're kind of a comedy writer. Like you have a comedy writer sensibility. You okay. make a lot of jokes. Yeah. It seems like very important and very, your ability to be funny is 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 key to you. Thank and you. it's something that you, uh, you know, can can peacock with mm -hmm. and, and and play with the big boys. Anybody anybody Trump. else who's, who thinks they're funny, you're just as funny. Where did that come from and how is it still is it still as important to you now as it has been over the years? Or is mm. that idea of I got to get in there and and uh, and spar comedically wane with time? I don't feel at all uh, competitive, you know, using that imagery. Mm. I don't. And in fact, and if there's somebody funnier in the room that mm. needs more oxygen, right. I let them have it. You okay. know, I really do. I'm not interested in mm. that. Uh, if I see an in, I'll I'll do something. Right. Uh, it is important for me. Uh, it is important to me. It's because it's fun, and I mean it achieves what all the other things we discussed uh, uh, earlier achieved. A kind of affirmation, a kind of understanding, and you know salute I get from my right. contemporaries. Um, but I, I I know a whole bunch of incredible hilarious people, including my sons, are right. goddamn funny yeah. and they make me laugh. I, I'm shocked. No, um, it's easy to, it's to want to make the sad clown laugh. Sad clown. Oh, sad <laughs> clown. <laughs> um, uh, and what was the part of the question? Where did it come from? Like, or not where, where did it come from? Because I, I think I know where it comes, it comes yeah. from just how you're raised and who you are. Does it 
did it has it waned over time? And you kind of answered that at the beginning, saying you'd give somebody else oxygen yeah, in the room. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I, I'm certainly it's not true for me that I would have always given somebody oxygen in the room right. if I was in a comedy circle. I'm just trying to listen more. Yeah. You know, rather than just constantly react. Uh -huh. uh, and because I've, I've, I've recognized Will you say that, that again. I was not listening. Uh huh. I need to listen more. <laughs> Let's play the joy music. Again. Sure. But it's backwards, backward, joy. backward mask joy uh, music. Uh, all right. Well, this has been great. Has it been? It has been. I hope so. It has been. I've, That's fun. Well, you tell me. Maybe it has been. Absolutely How fun. can I improve? What's better? What's how can no, I no, do no, better? No, 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 no. It's great because it's a real conversation. Here's the thing. I'm 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 an actor and very needy, and I've done a bunch of podcasts, right? and I talk about myself. Right. And I don't think I'm that interesting. I think I'm marginally interesting. That's fine. So I'm talking and right. and I'm featured, okay. but uh, I, I this is enjoyable, and also okay. it's a way for you and I to, to right. kind of have a date. Absolutely. This yes. has been lovely. That's what was great about it. Yeah. I've always liked you. I same. loved you. I've same. always felt a kindred spirit same, here. Same, and same. so I was very happy to to have this conversation. We're and walking each other it. to the same place, aren't we, Jay? Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Well, thank you, Stephen Weber. Uh, and God bless you for your good work. And bless you too. Okay. All right. And goodbye. This has been. And did you hear be, the good news? What's the good news? Oh, dude, don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Is going to be on podcast. Is that the good news? Or is it that Jesus is returned? Jesus is coming okay. back. Yeah. All right. And he loves you. They're all, they're all good news. It's all good news. <laughs> all right. Thank you for listening. And thank you. Uh, uh, please, uh, everybody, if you have a, a viewer, listener question, <laughs> please send it into. You are terrible at this. It's true. <laughs> Send it into Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. Oh, That's D B A W J A Y K O G E N at gmail.com. <laughs> That's where you can send your complaints Oof. and how, tell me how terrible I am at this. Oh, and, and I'll see you uh, or hear no, you next you time. I won't. I won't. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. Don't be alone.